All right, on screen with me from the University of Hawaii, the Rainbow Warriors, or what I like to call the Bows, our All-American outside here, Spiros Hakas and head coach Charlie Wade. Thanks for joining me here today, gentlemen. Aloha, Rob. Thanks for having us. Aloha. Thank you for having us. Always great seeing you guys, and that means the 2024 season is knocking on the door, so it's time to ask you some great questions to lead us all into this upcoming season. But, uh, Charlie, only three losses last year. Your your program has two of the last three national championships. You yourself have a 695 all-time winning percentage. How have you maintained the powerhouse status for the Bows? Well, it's a lot of hard work for a lot of people, you know. Um, we've had pretty good buy-in from the guys for several years now. And, uh, I mean, I think everybody's, you know, committed to being the best they can on and off the court. And it's correlated to a lot of wins. Yeah. I want to bounce this next question over to Spiros here and then over to you, Charlie, because you actually have the longer history with, uh, with this question here. But in Fairfax, uh, the 2023 National Championships, one of the main things that stood out with the amount of Hawaii fans that traveled the entire country to watch your team play in person with great enthusiasm. How special is your fan base and how important to your program is a showing of that support? Yeah, this has been, this has been something that we've grown to appreciate more and more over the years. It's something that we cannot take for granted. You know, having so many people travel so many miles away to just watch us play, it's been, it's been amazing. And we feel that same energy, whether we play here in the Stan Serif Center or we play in Fairfax, Virginia, or whatever it is. So it's been a very, it's been a blessing, I think, for all of us, just having so many people supporting us. Um, we try to give them back uh, all of our aloha. We try to give out everything on the court. Um, and we're very excited for this year, too. Yep. How about you, Charlie, your take on that? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. You know, the fan support that we get um, everywhere we go, you know, typically it's going to be the biggest crowd of the year. Uh, in that venue and um, you know obviously when we're here at home you know we play in a 10,000 seat arena and we'll sell it out we average you know just under 7,000 last year but um, it really is quite humbling and we just try to do everything we can to put a good product on the floor and and put guys out there that the the community and our fans are going to be proud of. Mm. You know I've had a, a really hard time trying to draft this question I'm trying to ask it to the best of my ability on the fly here but as an outsider, I feel like your team plays for something so much more than just the University of Hawaii on that volleyball court. Is that an adequate assessment? And if so, can you at least put into words what that is that they're playing for? So for me or Spiros? That's for either who wants to take it. Right. Well, I mean, <clears throat> we say a lot, um, you know, our lives are different and they're different in a lot of different ways. You know, we live in the most isolated place on earth and, and certainly the fan support is one of them. And, um, you know, we do represent more than ourselves and we, something that we talk about, like it's, it really kind of defines us that you're playing for something that um, is really special to a lot of people. And when we're on one of those runs at the end of the year, heading the postseason or in the postseason, the entire state is really enthralled and behind us. And, you know, we recognize that we bring a lot of joy and a lot of pride to a lot of people in this state. Um, lots of stories are people who are, you know, really dealing with some really heavy stuff in their lives. And, and UH men's volleyball ends up being, um, you know, just an escape to them and something that they, they really can take a lot of pride and enjoyment in. So um, it's important to us. It's something, again, that we're just very humbled by and um, continue to try to put the best product on the floor each and every night. Excellent. Spiros, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I feel like a lot of people from the outside can see that as pressure, um, but we see it as love, support, and something that we are very grateful for. Um, like Coach Charlie said, we had very uh, many times where people, you know, express to us how important the team is for them. And I think that goes beyond any awards, any titles, um, and it's just something that we are very grateful to feel and be able to represent, like you said, uh, more than the team, uh, representing a whole state. Well, let's uh, transition over to you uh, specifically, Spiros. Uh, you're going to be looked to for a lot of offense uh, this upcoming 2024 season, but you've spent some time on the Greek national team. And how's that experience helped you develop as a player during the off season? And how's it impacted you on the Rainbow Warrior squad? Yeah, uh, this summer was my second year with the senior national team. Um, first time participating in the Euro Volley. It was an amazing experience. You know, I got to play against top opponents like France, Turkey, and other teams. 
Um, just practicing that level against these players, I think, is just uh, something that makes you better. And I think like last year, uh, when I came back from the summer uh, practicing with the national team, I showed a good improvement. I feel like this uh, this season too, I've improved a lot of things. I worked on a lot of things, uh, my body and on volleyball, the volleyball side. And I think that it's going to show. And yeah, I'm excited for the season. Excellent. Well, uh, let's talk about your fall season here. We were chatting before going on screen here, but did something super unique and what it was a great ex would seem like a great experience, but the squad traveled even farther westward, going to the land of the rising sun, heading to Japan for a couple of uh, matches. Um, can both of you describe your experiences during that time? And we'll start with you, Charlie. Yeah, it's, it's pretty unique. Um, you know, we're able to do this as part of our fall, um, the four competition dates. And this year we used two of them on formal competition in Japan. You know, it's it's a great educational experience. You know, most of the guys had never been there. And it's such a different just culture. They're just moving around and being and seeing all the kind of really cool things in Japan. And then volleyball, stylistically, it is really different. You know, they play a totally different style that I think um, really is a team from North America. Everybody kind of plays the same. So going there, um, it really does kind of put us in an environment where it's it's such a different uh speed of play and how they play that um it really benefits us you know last time we did it was november 2018 um and we got off to a really good start in that 2019 season and and hoping for a similar kind of effect this year and nine new guys on the roster and uh even though a lot of familiar faces it really was good to kind of integrate the new guys in and travel and um and get some real good cultural and volleyball experience well i've got to ask spiros i mean Hearing you, Charlie, say they run faster, I thought you guys ran a pretty fast offense yourself. So, Spiros, how was it like playing against people faster than you guys? Yeah, it was a great experience, both on the volleyball court and outside of it. It was just a whole new world for me. Um, Culturally-wise, we saw places that I always wanted to visit. Um, and then on the volleyball side, I also had the chance to play Japan this summer against the national team, their B-side. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's true that they might not be as tall or strong as we're used to here in America or in Europe, but their style of playing is just different. They play really fast. They play really. Uh, they play great defense. Uh, so even if they don't have that advantage of high blocks, their ball does not hit the floor really easily. Um, so we had to adjust to that, and we learned. We had to learn how to adjust and play against the teams. And I think it's going to be a great advantage for us going to the season. Right. Hey, uh, Charlie, isn't your former middle Cole Hoagland playing professionally on one of the Japanese teams? Yeah, it's one of the teams we got to play against the Sakai Blazers. Um, coming into the match, we played him. He was leading the league in blocking for a 6'4 guy. We've all seen how dynamic he is. So um, he's having a nice year over there. You know, he has uh, dual citizenship. So he now he's Cole Watanabe, uh, <laughs> his mother's maiden name when he's in Japan. But it was really good to get to see him and connect with him. That's a guy that I've known since he's literally like 12 years old and um, just comes from a great family here from Waimanalo and just a, a really neat kid and great to see him playing um, at professionally at a really high level. Hey, he's quite the all-star. Uh, definitely the subject of a lot of highlight reels for your team. Let's let's go into the 2024 season. Um, you're going to be without an integral core of athletes who are keys to getting the Rainbow Warriors to NCAA titles, but What's the mindset of this new look Bose team? And let's start with you, Spiros. Yeah, you know, that situation kind of reminds me the transition from the 2020 season into the 2021 season where we lost a big core from the team. Um, and, uh, you know, the returners uh, either had to get on the court and be starters. Um, so I think that is going to be a season where, you know, we've already worked really hard and we figure out a lot of things we know. We have a new team. We have new, nine new guys in the gym. Uh, it takes time to figure out the system, how the team is going to work, what's the, the dynamic of the team. And I think that going into the season, uh, we're going to be we're going to be good because I think that we put a lot of work, we put in the hours uh, in the court, in the weight room. And, you know, I think that we've connected as a team, which is the most important thing. Yep. How about you, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited about uh, going into this year. Um, you know, we got a few new pieces in the gym, uh, Kevin Colling and Tred Rosenthal, two setters that come in and really, you know, good guys that can play at a high level, really athletic and and, and really just brought a lot to our practice gym. Um, you know, a nice group of returning guys 
um, the gift of COVID, like nobody's leaving, they're all still here. Um, but I think the, one of the biggest differences coming off the 22 season, um, you know, guys went off, we talked about the national team experience and we had multiple guys kind of spend the summer um, in different national team gyms, whether they're ours or somewhere else on the planet. And those guys get kind of beat up over the summer. They don't have that critical time uh, to let their bodies recover. So then when they come back in the fall, we're always seemed like last year we were always under some kind of load management because guys weren't just 100 percent. And it ends up being um, kind of a negative at the end where you, you you're not healthy enough to be able to go hard in the weight room. And then by the end of the year, you haven't really put the hay in the barn to to get yourself, you know, to be able to to sustain it all the way to the end of the year. So I think we're in a lot better place this year. Everybody showed up um, in a lot better shape. We've had a great fall. Guys have worked really hard and and really looking forward to the start of the season. Great. Well, with 2024 coming up, uh, I was looking at your schedule and it looks like you're hosting two first time opponents in Manoa this year, Tusculum and Missouri S&T of the Independent Conference. And then a team that's going to be up there only for their second time from the Conference Carolinas, Emmanuel. Um, how important is it to diversify your schedule for the growth of the game? And we'll start with you, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, the scheduling's a pain in the coli for sure. I mean, we got, you know, I'm I'm told I have to have, uh, you know, somewhere 17 to 19 home games. And with only six, uh, you know, league opponents, five, six league teams, five opponents, that's uh, at least 18 dates we got to fill. So, um it's a challenge. And, uh, you know, we have added these new leagues, the growth in the sport has been significant. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll go to these kind of teams and go play at their places at some point in the future. Um, but for them coming here, you know, they always talk about how much it helps them to see what volleyball can be like, you know, it's not just a friends and family to show up and play in a place like the Stan Sheriff center. Um, that really is a, a high level professional event. It's great for them. It's uh, really memorable for their athletes. And then, you know, they always end up bringing like an administrator too that to look at it and go, wow, that's what men's volleyball really can be. Um, so it's great from that standpoint to let, let other people, there, you know, like say on the administrative side of the sport to see really what men's volleyball has the p- potential to be. How about you, Spiros? Uh, thoughts on playing some first-time opponents and some really new opponent, opponents? Yeah, I feel like the main the main part of this is, like you said, like Coach said, it's growing the game. Uh, it's people coming here and seeing what the potential of men's volleyball can be. Uh, I think not a lot of people, or not as much people as they should, realize how great the sport is uh, and what opportunities uh, we can have by growing the sport and by letting more people know um, about our beautiful sport. And also on our side, you know, it can be great uh, hosting opponents where, you know, we can put guys in that need to get more playing time, uh, giving opportunities to everyone. So I think there's benefits on both sides. And and, and let me just add to that. I would say, you know, we, again, um, we've been able to fill our schedule. We have 28 matches all against division one, division two opponents. So these all count towards the schedule, you know, and we're, we're at the disadvantage in the, standpoint like we're not in southern california where we can't load up the van and drive up and down the 405 and pick up not only all the other division one and two teams but the some really good opponents that are naia d3 um which are great games competitively but they don't really count on the schedule um so for us it's like if i've got to fill those dates i'm going to fill them with uh with matches that really have kind of a dual purpose they're they're growing the game as you said so to speak and they count towards the rpi the kpi you're calculating it um they're more significant matches yeah well seeing that the the was it the overall participation rate of men's and boys volleyball just in the last few years is up 70 plus percent so i mean i love i followed hawaii when they went out of conference carolina saw the crowd they were bringing out there and they'll do the same. They always do that at, at the Simplify Stan Sheriff Center. So I love seeing that the teams they bring in, they play, and they really diversify and get it out there. Um, let's talk about as you get more towards uh, the meat of your schedule. And there, I picked out one string of matches that will be, I, I believe, would be crucial March 8th through 16th when you um, face NCA participant Grand Canyon, UCI at your Outrigger Invitational. And then you face Long Beach State twice at the Pyramid uh, that following week. But um, what are your thoughts on going into that that week? I know there's a whole 
bit of, of matches going on before then, but that was the eye catcher for me because that's a big tournament that you host and then you start Big West play with a pretty top rival. And we'll yeah, start don't with- forget don't forget Dan Friend and Lewis in that group too. Like that's a that's a perennial oh. top ten team. That's uh, right. Of so course. The Friars. Lewis is in that group as well. So yeah, that it gets pretty serious from then on from then on out. You know, you play the outrigger and then you're at Long Beach. And once you hit the Big West, you know, it's gonna be a battle every night. Every team's really good. You know, we'll have, you know, two or three teams ranked the top five probably again this year. So um, yeah, you got to be ready to play by the middle of March for sure. Uh, Spiros, I'm going to hit you with this next question here. Um, you know, we mentioned you're going to have a new look, and obviously we've got you, Chaz, and Guillerme back, but what other athletes could volleyball fans expect to see on the floor for the Rainbow Warriors? I think everyone on the team uh, is able to participate and contribute in great uh, degree this year. Um, I feel like we have more competition for every spot, which has been great for us, you know, in practice, in the practice gym. Things are really, really competitive uh, in a good way, of course. Uh, between outsides, middle setters, uh, we have Kurt Nesser, um, who has stepped up this year uh, and he's expecting to have a big role in the team, you know. Um, then we have the two setters, Tred and Kevin, who are battling every day in the practice gym. And it's really impressive to see both, you know. You have a fifth year transfer who is fighting for his spot, and you have a 17 year old freshman who is also really, really good. Um, and I'm impressed by both of them. Um, and then you got our opposites. You have Alakai, who's been here for many, many years, and he's fighting for his spot. And then you have uh, Oji, uh, who is also a European athlete and has this philosophy of Europe. Uh, so I think that's what makes this year exciting, just the competition that's been uh, on every uh, spot on the roster. And then, of course, you have Keone Thiem, uh, who's, who's been our serving specialist for many years now. and. I think he's also going to have a big role, bigger role this year in the team. Is he going to bust the 80 mile an hour uh, service speed uh, that, barrier this year? That and much more, I hope. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Yeah, he's very determined. I'm okay with him leaving it at 76 and putting it in play about 85%. The Big West Men's Volleyball Championship comes back to Manoa in 2024. What are your thoughts on hosting this event again? And what could it mean for your team come postseason time? I One, I think it's great for the sport of volleyball. You know, I get people all over the planet that are like they're watching those matches because it's, you know, the reality is you're just not seeing a lot of matches played in front of 10,000 people. And it's high level volleyball, regardless who's playing. Usually the semifinal final, those are those are really high level matches. So, you know, again, it's just one volleyball is a big deal in our community. And, you know, everywhere from the governor through the to the Hawaii Tourism Authority to, you know, all the significant um, kind of corporate entities in our town that want to get behind uh, UH men's volleyball and support and bring those kind of opportunities uh, to the community. It's something our fans really enjoy. So again, you know, we're humbled that we get that kind of support and um, and playing at home is uh, it's a nice <laughs> position to be in in the postseason. Uh, and I would add to Spiros, you talked a little bit about the, the returning guys coming back. Um, you're going to see uh, Aleu Choi play the libero spot for us. And this is uh this guy is a, a gifted, gifted athlete. He's been with us four years. He, you know, a straight A student that has an engineering degree, and he's got two years of eligibility. That's going after an MBA, um, and uh, just really excited for him and his future. Just like the 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 greatest kid that you could ever meet, and just such a hard worker. And uh, I think his emergence is going to be significant, and uh, really looking forward to it. I know he will be a fan favorite from day one. Loves well, hearing about the unsung heroes for sure. Um, we're going to end on this question for uh, Spiros here, but uh, on the Hawaii broadcast, on Hawaii radio, you've been tabbed the Greek freak. You're going to be without Grease Lightning this year, but uh, that name is so apropos for you because you come in big in the clutch. What makes you the big-time player in those big moments? Uh, I don't know if I'm the right person to answer that question. I don't call myself any nicknames, but um, I just I think it's something that I've been trying to do since I was – really younger uh, in my club teams back in Greece, you know, I, I always like uh, stressful situations, you know, close games, fifth sets. Um, and I always like to be the guy that's going to have the pressure. And I think I was always able to handle it. Not always in the same way, but I've grown to learn how to handle pressure in, a, in my own way, which I think works. Um, but I think, yeah, if that answers the question. 
Yeah, excellent. Well, it's Spiros Hakas, outside hitter for Hawaii, and head coach Charlie Wade of the Rainbow Warriors. Appreciate your guys' time today. Thank you for coming on. Well, thank you a lot.